Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna have a look at why it's always a good idea to be selling some crypto, taking profits. Here's what I will do next, and just some ideas, maybe you can begin to have a look into them, develop a plan if you haven't already, and the idea today is to have a look at Cardano and compare it with Chili's, which is currently going extremely well. It's very, very hot today. It's not a buy recommendation. I need to make that extremely clear early on in the video. I am not giving any buy or sell recommendations in this video because it's not financial advice. So if you like the sound of that, hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon. It goes a very long way to helping out the channel, push this sort of video in the YouTube algorithm. Let's try and make our way above the moon boy cryptocurrency content out there and provide some real value for people so that they don't get burnt expecting huge results. So we're gonna compare these two cryptocurrencies with their major alts and Bitcoin and their US dollar value. I'll explain that in a little detail because some people are still getting confused with why they would compare a crypto with another crypto as opposed to just against USD. So that's what we're gonna look at and then what to do with it next. I've talked enough about that. If you enjoy it, hit that like button. Let's get the video to 3000 likes. All right, first things first, let's take a look at the videos in question. And I wanna go right back to about two weeks ago on the channel, I've got a video here, Cardano Surges. This one in the first 10 seconds, I talk about an exit strategy. This was on the top. So it was on February the 27th. I didn't know it was the top on that day, but just looking at that chart just made me a little bit uncomfortable seeing that we had a direct run to this all time high low close below the previous day on very, very, very high volume. Uh, and as we saw the next few days, not much happened. Now, I'm not saying that Cardano is going to drop out of the sky from here because I still think we've got a $2.50 or a $3 Cardano in us. But as a trader, from a trading perspective, so we need to separate the two again. One's investing, we have a bag. One's trading where we need to basically sell off some profits so that we can reinvest those somewhere else to make our 10 or 100 X returns. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, video on the channel two days ago talking about how we cycle our profits into other cryptocurrencies. Currently on Cardano against the US dollar, uh, the volume is down. So we're just gonna recap these and then go into the example between Cardano and Chili's and why it is a good idea to be taking profits sometimes and not all of it needs to be taken. Sometimes just a good chunk of it. Sometimes the initial capital and some profit so that you can spin it into something else. Cardano against uh, the dollar is still holding up but volume is drying up. So it, it, it kind of feels like the mood is changing away from Cardano. I think you may have, have experienced that yourself. We're seeing a lot to do with Ethereum at the moment and then a lot of these other smaller cryptos, for example, Chili's. So let's have a quick look at where we sit at the moment with the Bitcoin value. Now I'll take this time to explain why I look at these compared to Bitcoin and if you already understand that, you're one step ahead of the, of the pack. Basically, Cardano topped out on basically all of its charts on around the 27th of February. Now, this is against the Bitcoin value. If we had a crystal ball, then we could have sold all of our Cardano for, say, Bitcoin or Ethereum. God forbid we sell it for Ethereum. But the, the pricing shows that there was a better return to be had by selling all of the Cardano at that point and then watching the market tank, which tanked about 40% from the top. Of course, no one's gonna get this exact top or this exact bottom, but just for argument's sake, there has been a 40% decline in the Cardano versus Bitcoin value. So to reduce your risk, you're better off holding Bitcoin in this case from the 27th of February than holding Cardano. Now I talked about that in a couple of uh, videos after that point. I just felt like the, the steam was running out around the 1st of March, which you can see a video on the channel back here and then also again on the 3rd of March. And this was around the time that I put a video out saying selling, but I'm not selling all of the of the Cardano. We just don't know. Sometimes these things turn around and go skyrocketing, but I got absolutely ripped apart by some fanboy Cardano holders in the comments. But now we can see looking back that it was a good idea to do that. I don't know for sure at the time, but just the chart was telling me, the feeling out there was telling me, it's probably a good idea to take some of that off the table. And this is gonna lead into Chili's. But before I get there, let's look at Cardano Ethereum. Very similar chart, 
Basically, this just means we want to reduce our risk. I just said that against Bitcoin, reducing our risk, holding a riskier asset, which is Cardano. Unfortunately, Bitcoin, Ethereum been around a lot longer. They have a bigger user base. Uh, they're stronger projects at the moment. And so even Cardano has dropped against Ethereum from that point by 40% as well, 42% to the low. So around that 40% mark, we've lost uh, that much of our Cardano value. Now this is holding up against the uh, previous resistance. So we've come back to the support level, which we've been following for many, many weeks now on the channel. So we look at it on the weekly, there's a top, another top, another top, and the market is coming back to retest this top at around 57,000 Gwei. Should we break down from that? Not a good sign for Cardano versus Ethereum. I dare say we possibly will in time, not tomorrow, all right? But we possibly will because Ethereum still hasn't gone on that big run. And if the market sentiment and the narrative shifts towards Ethereum, then people are going to be running for the hills, running for Ethereum, and that's just going to push the price of Ethereum up. Cardano may even stay the same against its US dollar value, but may fall uh, against the Ethereum value because Ethereum is shooting up so much faster. So you can really tell if you pay attention in the market, you don't get married to something, you can really feel and see and hear that the shift has moved away from Cardano now that their hard fork is done and all of the news is moving away from it. So that's Cardano, Ethereum, Bitcoin, USD, Cardano versus DOT, Polkadot uh, is also on the decline. This is a weekly chart. So if we move it back to a daily, it looked like it may have held up, but now it's again trending down. So Polkadot might be coming into light soon as well. I'm just taking a stab at what the news might expect next because Polkadot is having a pretty good run. But Cardano, down, 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 down against all of those fronts, against Binance, also on the way down. We thought it might hold up, but Binance is just too strong for it at the moment. Hasn't broken the low yet. And the only thing that is really holding it up is the US dollar value because Bitcoin is increasing in value. All right, so now that we have covered a look at an example, a real-time example with my videos on the channel where I got ripped apart, about selling something, not all of it, just taking some profits. I want to have a look at Chili's. So to find Chili's, CHZ, we're going to look at the Binance chart. I'll take the USDT and look at that. We have a top at around 50 cents. I was literally just talking to a mate who may or may not be watching this video. Uh, trading futures, not leverage, thank God for that but I think he knows what he's doing. I really thought that this would be the top at around the 50 cent mark. Um, look, it might not be, we might run a little bit further, but personally, I would be very happy with those sorts of gains from uh, two weeks ago, sitting at around five cents all the way to 50 cents, ten, almost, well, a 10 times from the five cents, not a 10X, but you get what I'm saying. Five cents for round numbers to 50 cents, huge gains. Now that's in two weeks. If you just bought a thousand bucks, approximately nine or 10,000 bucks there now, okay? So that's round numbers. I know it's all, uh, you know, in the past 900%. Right, so we're talking about taking some profits. We could have taken a few profits on the way up and just been pretty con content with taking, uh, you know, selling some out at around 13 or so cents, or maybe when it broke back down underneath these lows, not bad, 100%. Why were we getting in at this point, you might ask? Well, if we go back, we identify these patterns. I'm not saying I'm in Chili's, but we look at this same exact pattern repeating over and over and over again. And now this is a really important point that it should get boring. It has to get boring. If it's exciting and you're flutter, fluttering with emotion and butterflies and uh, you just can't wait to look at your iPhone and look at these prices skyrocketing, you are not doing yourself a service and you will probably lose a lot of money in the long run. This needs to become boring in the way that you can go, boom, I see that pattern. Signal is buy when we see the swings break. Let me put it onto the daily chart so we can see uh, a little closer here. Uh, like I said, if you're familiar with the channel, you know that we look at these patterns time and time again. We have a, uh, a breakout, a retest of the highs, then we continue to climb up on swings. So we got up, 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 little bit down. We break out, high volume, 
surely this sounds like a broken record by now if you've been following me for at least at least a month or two we see it over and over and over again especially with these charts and this is typical of a wyckoff theory accumulation breakout pattern it's been around for hundreds of years it happened in the stock market in the 1920s when all of the noobs that's how the stock market boom and bust occurred the noobs got in uh, they didn't know what was going on. They were being manipulated, just like all of these markets are manipulated. So don't come crying wolf about that either. They're all manipulated, but you can see it in the chart. And once they've built their positions, they go on a sort of social conditioning adventure and just start to really push the stock or the cryptocurrency. It's the same pattern time and time again. So we can see here swing, retest, breakout, high volume, and the market begins to run like a very, very hot horse just continues up into extreme volume. Now this is a daily chart on a log and I take the log off. You can just see it is blown out of the stables. This is something that we talk about a lot in the Investor Accelerator course. So if you're interested in that, there is still a discount on it. The price is increasing. A link to that in the description down below. This is just basic swing trading and uh, volume analysis. And that's all in the course down below. We've got a new educator on board, 11 years experience as well in trading markets just like this. And in particular, leveraged futures markets as well. So check it out if you guys are interested. Link is down below. Hit that like button if you're finding value from the video. Let's get it to 3000 likes. Right, Chili's looking pretty toppy. All I'm saying here is this is the pattern that we've seen. I gave you a few extra stories about what goes on behind the scenes when it comes to uh, accumulation and breakout zones. And then what happens next? We usually see a massive blow off top and all of the insiders, all the accumul accumulation uh, guys and investors, whoever it is that have bought through this period, maybe even bought again through this period, are now beginning to dump on the poor amateur trader. And that's what happens through these levels. And we tend to see, especially on uh, lower capped markets, pretty much just spikes up and then big reversals. I'm sure you've seen that pattern before. Everyone thinks it's cheap here. They buy up because we've got another zone here. They go, wow, 25 cents is cheap. They buy up. It does not make the top. And then that is your next signal for the next uh, basically decline. So I'm sure you've seen that pattern before. Up, retest, lower top, dump. Happens time and time again. Getting back to the point about taking profits, why it's always a good idea to take profits and sell crypto, because we see the same patterns happen time and time again. I showed you on Cardano of the market moving up. We saw it drop against Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB and DOT. It is holding up against USD because uh, Bitcoin is on its move up at the moment, testing new all time highs. Chili's is the example that I just showed then when it comes to a market that is extremely hot. While we're here, let's have a look at Chili's versus Bitcoin on Binance. Same sort of thing is happening. Oh, I've got a line on here. This is a breakout level, old tops, very, very simple stuff and away it goes. So that could be your entry target, your entry signal breakout. What is your exit signal? That is the big thing that the amateurs don't have and the professionals do have. Become a professional, make money, trade it and make sure you make profits from it. And then what do we do next with the profits? That's what I've got here, what to do next. I've got a couple of ideas. I've talked about it in the exit strategies video. We can begin to move that into some stable coins and I've got crypto.com or BlockFi. I also have links to those in the description down below. They're referral links so you guys will get your $25 up to $250 with BlockFi. So check out those links down below. Crypto.com I use with a uh, debit card right here. So that is super handy. The app works amazingly. Their support is a little bit tied up. Crypto is crazy at the moment. Stable coins is one option to take some of those profits out of Chilix because people are like, well, what the hell do I do? What do I sell it into? Stable coins, that's one idea. Then you've got the interest earning that you can do on those platforms, eight to 12% per annum. You don't have to be in the market all the time and the smart money isn't in the market all of the time. Next thing, depending on how much you have made, you could be looking to stack your metals if that's what you like to do. So you've got to go out and find a broker, uh, move that funds into that, or you can get cryptocurrencies that are uh, backed one-to-one -one with metals. Make sure you research those because some of them say they are, but they're not. Uh, another thing that I will be looking at on the channel is building a stock portfolio. I believe that the cryptocurrency market will peak out before 
the stock market peaks out and I'm looking at a date of around 2026, 2026 for a stock market and real estate peak. That is based on this book here, Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking by Philip J. Anderson. I'll talk about that a lot more on the channel. Uh, basically, that is study of over 200 years of cycles. More and more detail in that book if you really want to see it. I sh will have a link to this in the description on pretty much every single one of my videos. Amazing, all right? If you're interested in learning more about that, probably lost a few of you by now, but this is the study to be doing if you want to continue rotating those profits in to other asset classes to build your passive income portfolios, which is what we talk about in the membership group. Also link to that in the description. Um, stocks, stock portfolios, I will talk about that on the channel. Metals, I'm not liking as much. There's just not that much you can do with it. So I really use metals as uh, kind of like a last resort. I know that there are other ideas out there that the world become, could be coming to an end and we need something physical in case the internet and the electricity goes down. I'm not concerned with that at the moment. Um, so that's why I think the cryptocurrencies into stable coins, when I have an idea of what I want to do, what I want to invest in in stocks, then I can sell out some of those into those stock portfolios. And I'd rather hold stocks than trade them too much. Cash is another very good idea because I wanna be able to purchase and buy some cryptocurrency later in the bear market. So I wanna start building that section of my portfolio as well. Those cash bases, we are in the bull market. This is the time to be building those cash bases. And I know some people have only just come into the market, so it's very hard to hear that and stomach it. But what I say to that is stick around with the market, go through the bull, go through the bear. It's very different emotions on both sides of the fence. And in that sideways period where you're just dollar cost averaging in for years and the market just doesn't do anything. You just think your money is doing nothing. And then all of a sudden, 10x, 20x, it's crazy. So really stick around with that. And that's why I have also built that membership course as well. So people can uh, easily and affordably stick around with the market to see these patterns continue to play out time and time again. And hopefully it becomes boring for you. Last thing is real estate. Now, if you do have a big enough position after you've started selling out some of these cryptocurrencies, then Purchasing some land is another option. Now, I'm not telling you to do any of these because that is financial advice and I don't give financial advice telling you what to do. I don't know your situation. I'm talking about asset classes, which I like the look of and here's what I'll do next. I like the look of real estate as the market continues to improve and it is astronomical how uh, how much the market has gone up in the last 12 months when all of your doomsdayers say it should have fallen 40%. I've got research to show that it won't happen and that won't happen in, for at least another, say, three to five years into that 2026 top, which I'll go to uh, go into in other videos. So if you like the sound of that, let me know in the comments down below. I look to expand this channel beyond cryptocurrency. I absolutely love crypto, but if we're going to be long-term investors and rotate our profits into other areas which have better opportunities eventually, then we need to be open-minded to all of these asset classes to become well-rounded, holistic investors. So like I said, if you like the sound of that, hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon. We'll be here right through bull market, bear market, and into all of our other asset classes. Like the video, let's see if we can get to 3,000 likes. I hope a lot of people see this, and if they wanna follow someone else who does something very similar, please do that. Just don't get caught holding dirty bags from the top to the bottom. Do whatever you need to do. Just get your mindset out of that. That's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on Instagram as well. Daily Q&A, which I'm going to answer right now. Watch my uh, retirement fund increase in value. Why not? I'm posting that on Instagram stories where you can ask your questions as well. So yeah, if you like anything else, uh, you want to know anything else, let me know in the comments down below. I'll see if I can make some more videos on those for you guys. But until that occurs, I'll see you at the next video. So until then, have more fun to get more done.